welcome to a hot and steamy UK and welcome also to another edition of English Addict. Surprise, surprise! <laughs> Hello, everyone. Well, <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You've got a question on your mind, haven't you? Where did Mr. Steve get that gorgeous shirt from? I know, it's wonderful. <laughs> no, I know what you're really thinking. Where is Mr. Duncan? But first, I have to read something out. Now, let's see if I can get this right. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. and uh, Mr. Steve in England. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. I think I got that right. Well, if any of you were watching on Sunday, and I know many of you were because I was there too, Mr. Duncan was not in the best frame of mind. Because, as you know, he was dreading today and has been dreading today for several weeks. Mr Duncan was distraught, he was unhappy, he was not looking forward to his birthday and unfortunately I haven't managed to persuade him to appear for you today and give you a proper English lesson. He is, as we speak, lying down on the bed, crying, sobbing his heart out. The curtains are drawn. He is not a well man. So instead, you've got me for two hours. And I'm so excited because I'm going to talk today about idioms. Two hours of idioms we're going to talk about today. And I've got lots of exciting things to talk about. Cars as well. We'll probably spend an hour on cars. And then I might talk about, uh, you know, the coronavirus. I might talk about uh, religion. And then we'll get on to politics. It's going to be a fun, packed show. And I'm not going to lose any of Mr Duncan's viewers at all. So without further ado, uh, I, uh, I, 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 I... Oh, oh should let me press something. No, I think we need a clap, don't we? Yes, no. Was that a clap or was that... Uh, let me have a look. Uh, that was a clap. Was that a clap? Yes. No. Um, <laughs> let me think. I'm not sure I'm doing this right. Uh, oh, right. OK. No. All right. Yeah, so, uh, anyway, let's let's get going. Mr Duncan is uh, under the weather. Um, I've got to think on my feet if I'm going to get this right. So let's get the ball rolling and let's get this show on the road right now. Let's kick off with cars. Now, as you all know, I love Ford Mustangs and Ford Mustangs are my favourite cars. So let's talk about idioms to do with cars. Let's talk about the tyres and then the oil and all the other things that go with it. All the wonderful, fantastic things that we can talk about with cars. But first of all, I've got lots of idioms to go through. Here are lots of idioms. Can you see them all here? I've got idioms for everybody. Oh, I ought to look at the live chat as well. Uh, hi, everybody. Mr. Duncan. Yes, stay calm, Mr. Steve. <sighs> stay calm. I'm not used to uh, doing a live show. I'm used to co-hosting with Mr. Duncan. And as such, I must remain calm throughout. So here we go. I've just got a few idioms that we need to go through today. There's ten there. There's about another six there, maybe 15 in that pile. Uh, but I think I'll kick off with this one here. Keep the ball rolling. Now, I think what we need to do is if you want Mr Duncan to come down, I think that we ought to call him in. Because... I've just said all the things that Mr Duncan would hate me to talk about in a live show. He'd hate me to talk about idioms for two hours, cars, coronavirus, politics and religion, because he knows that would upset everybody that's watching. So if we call Mr Duncan down, maybe he will appear. I'm hoping he's listening. I'm sure he's listening. He must be thinking, oh, Mr Steve, I'm not going to have any of my viewers left. They're all going to go. They're all going to vanish. 
and on my special day, my birthday. Oh, so please call for Mr. Duncan. Let's see if we can entice him down from the bedroom. Oh, Mr. Duncan, where are you? I'm talking about cars, Mr. Duncan. I'm talking about idioms for two hours. I've mentioned coronavirus not once, not twice, but three times. Is it? Will it work? Will it work? <laughs> no, there's no sign of Mr. Duncan. Right, let's go on to this. Uh, fair weather friend. There we go. There's an idiom. Uh, work it out for yourself. I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that that everyone will know what we're talking about there. Um, what was that? I was supposed to, was supposed to be a clap. Let's have another clap. Oh, I've gone backwards. Oh, Mr. Duncan, Mr. Duncan, the technology. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Oh, Mr. Duncan, help me. Help me. Help me, Mr. Duncan. Oh, no. Oh, it's hot in here. Oh, I need a drink. I need a drink, Mr. Duncan. Where are you, Mr. Duncan? I, don't, I can't go, but I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Oh. What's next? What's next? Um, the weather. It's hot. It's hot here today. It's very hot. Plants, the trees, um, technology, uh, soft boxes, cameras. Uh, Mr. Duncan's got a... Oh. Oh. Mr. Duncan. Hello, Mr. Duncan. I'm very pleased to see you. I can't, I can't say how much I'm pleased to see you, Mr. Duncan. I, I don't think I could cope with this show all on my own. It's very difficult. I didn't realise how difficult it was. I used to laugh and joke about you and say, mm, any fool can do that, but it's not true. I didn't know what... It... Why are you wearing those glasses? Are you feeling better? Mr Duncan's here. It's all exciting. Shall I move over into my usual spot? What's going on? What's going on, Mr Duncan, is that you said I'm not appearing today. I'm feeling too delicate. It's my birthday. I'm getting older. You yes. were going on and on last Sunday, on and on about your birthday and about your grandparents and how old they were when you were a youngster. Yes. Are you feeling better? Are you feeling better, Mr Duncan? I was feeling better, but then I realised you were hijacking my show. Well, someone's got to carry it going. You have can't you, let the viewers down. Have you managed to lose all my viewers? I don't know. I'm sorry, everyone. Is anybody here? Let me have a look at the live chat. Uh, no, people are here. People are here. Good. Yes, I can see. I recognise some faces. <laughs> what are you doing with a sheep? This is my new friend. This is my 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 new sheep who has been comforting me during my downtime. I don't know why, <laughs> but <laughs> you're not really. We're just pretending, aren't you? You're not really upset. Well, I bought you some lovely presents today, Mr Duncan, and that still hasn't cheered you up. There are two things that are bothering me. What's that? First of all, you presenting my show. That's the one thing. Well, aren't you happy that I managed to work out at least how to get it going? Yes. And the other thing yes. that is annoying me is it's so hot. Oh, my God. Have you noticed how hot it is? Look, I've got a thermometer here. Yes. Where, where, where did you put that? Has it been anywhere special? This is an old-fashioned thermometer that when I was growing up... OK. When old... I was a teenager, younger than that... My gosh. My father had a greenhouse, and this is the thermometer he kept in his greenhouse. It's still working. It is registering, Mr Duncan, 35 degrees centigrade. It is 35 degrees ce Celsius. Or if you're into Fahrenheit, which I don't think anybody else around the world is... No one is. That's 90 for Fahrenheit and I will show you to prove it can I can you see that yeah. where the red mark is look at that it's hot baby 35 we are having a hot day Mr Duncan I'm sweating I don't know if I'm going to be able to survive no me for, neither uh two hours <laughs> me neither <laughs> so after destroying all of my equipment I'm, I'm just putting everything right now because Steve Unfortunately, he's been pressing all the buttons and he's, he's messed everything up now. So I'm just making sure that we have everything we need. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan and also Mr. Steve here in England. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. 
are you happy I really hope you are feeling happy today thank you mr. Steve Did I say that right no not really <laughs> because I, I wrote it down on this piece of paper I wanted to get it right even reading from a piece of paper you got it wrong anyway the most important thing is we are here it's my birthday and it's Wednesday Here we go again. It's a Wednesday and also it just happened. It is my birthday, Mr. Steve. Can you believe it? Uh, I don't think anybody knows, do they? <laughs> I haven't mentioned it much. You haven't mentioned it. I'm not sure people know it's your birthday. <laughs> you just like the attention, don't you, Mr. Duncan? He Me likes the attention. What are you saying? Are you saying that I am an, an attention seeker? That's the sort of thing that Tomek would say. I'm going to fan myself with some idioms. It's so hot in here. Oh, has anybody fanned themselves with idioms before? I, I don't think so. First. I'm going to fan myself with your mother's birthday card. I received Ooh. some lovely greetings, first of all, on a serious note. Can I first of all say thank you very much? Thank you so much for all of your lovely messages this morning on Facebook also email and also I had some donations as well a couple of donations come through on PayPal I've had so many messages this morning and I know that I'm not going to have a chance to reply to them all which is a shame really so don't take it personally if I don't reply to you straight away but thank you anyway for your lovely messages I do appreciate them every single one of them uh, I, I love receiving your messages especially on your birthday and, and as Steve mentioned I was feeling a little down last week I was feeling a little oh I know one thing Steve it's so hot I'm going to undo my button look at that I'm opening my button revealing my hairy chest Disgusting. look at that not a lot of people know that I have a hairy chest admittedly not many hairs there are not many hairs on my hairy chest but there it is and as you can see Mr Steve has opened his button as well it is so hot today let's well, strip off shall we I think shall we yeah let's strip off we are going to to take our shirts off but don't worry we are, we are not topless it's far too hot we it's are not too hot in here Mr Duncan we are not topless we are going to take it's too hot I'm taking my clothes off there we go Okay, me too. <laughs> Look at <Ooh>. all that. <laughs> there we go. Red neck, Mr. Duncan. We are now in our <laughs> we are now in our vests. Maybe this is the first time that anyone has ever done a live stream in their vest. So th this is decent. I think this is decent. In fact, Mr. Steve, if you go to the beaches here in England, you will find many people on the beach where will be wearing their their oh, vests is that why we're doing this today well various reasons <laughs> <laughs> one it is very 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 hot so this is where we should be at the moment we should be actually on the beach with all of those lovely lovely people who are not social distancing so that's where we should be on a day like this it is august the 12th it's also my birthday we are in the garden and it is quite literally the hottest day of the year so far it is absolutely baking hot and that's the reason why we've decided to strip off down to our vests I'm pretty sure we will get some complaints but that is where we should be today you see we should be on the beach talking of which do you remember Steve when we went to visit the beach a couple of years ago and this is where I would like to be now so not on the crowded beach because this beach is very crowded what I would like to be doing right now is walking here oh yes oh look at that so there is a lovely deserted beach an empty beach so that's the place I would like to be at the moment Steve to be honest near some lovely cool water and oh feeling that fresh breeze and maybe going for a dip 
in the ocean yes we might see mr steve going into the water in a few moments in fact having a little paddle oh you've shown that one before mr duncan are you sure oh just a few times do you remember it i do so there we are look walking along the beach that is where i want to be at the moment steve i want to be there well but... i'd like to be there swimming in the sea as you know i like swimming in the sea we know that so what's happening today mr duncan well besides it being my birthday besides my birthday we are doing lots of things we are wearing our vests i have decided from now on august the 12th the 12th of august will be wear your vest day so today we are wearing our vests i think my vest looks lovely and stylish mr steve's vest is rather nice it means steve can show off his big sturdy <laughs> handsome body weedy muscles <laughs> i've never had muscly arms no i've been i went to a gym but it just didn't work no although i i do feel quite strong from all the all the gardening and and uh, sort of heavy building and lifting work that i've been doing recently the last couple of days because i must point out as well that steve has been on holiday this week he's had a little break from work and of course he's off today and that's the reason why he's he's here with yeah, me just in case anyone from work is watching and wonders why i'm on yes <laughs> i am on holiday yes. so, oh there it goes there goes the camera and we are going to have some problems today with the camera i don't if know what, i don't know why but the sound's still going isn't it mr duncan <laughs> the sound is still going i've reset it there we go Good. there we go <laughs> it, it should be all right now it's shocked by the the sight of us i know uh, wearing uh wearing just uh, well wearing nothing really yes it's very strange i don't know what's happening with my camera but we, we we've had a few problems uh, during the last live stream as well anyway the it's my fault the reason why we're here today is because well we do normally we do live english lessons we talk about the english language however today a little bit different because it is my birthday so we're having a little bit of a, a different atmosphere steve for the past two days has been working busily in the garden he's been continuing to repair the large wall we have a big stone wall in the garden and steve has been busy repairing it but today it's too hot it's too hot for this inside the gazebo what's the temperature 35 degrees it is 30 it's actually gone up half a degree it was actually 34 and a half <laughs> it's actually gone up half a degree which is what you'd expect because it's going into the afternoon yes and normally peak temperatures are probably around four o'clock so uh i think it's probably five degrees hotter because we're under this gazebo amazing but that is hot that is very hot you'd normally expect those sorts of temperatures in mainland Europe yes well uh, certainly in the, in the south of Europe they're having a, a lot of hot weather and and now we have some of it as well it's like being in in the tropics in fact last night we had one of the most amazing thunderstorms and lightning storms that I've ever known <laughs> I've never seen anything like it the the lightning was flashing all the time for about an hour and a half unbelievable we had 90 minutes of thunder lightning heavy rain everything was happening and the lightning wouldn't stop it, it was just flashing constant never seen anything like it, it in was, this country i've never seen anything like it and we it? thought didn't we mr duncan mm -hmm. it was about an hour before your birthday before yes. midnight well i thought this was this was mr duncan's sort of id uh his sort of unconscious self mm. was 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 uh, uh, representing itself in the weather the turmoil the thunder the lightning was all mr duncan's mind working over time <laughs> yes <laughs> maybe <sighs> i'm not sure about that but but we we had a very loud very noisy very uh, almost frightening uh, there was there was one strike of lightning that came down near the house so it came from the sky to the ground and it was amazing and the sound was was unbelievable so very dramatic and that's the reason why we are wearing our vests today so this will be from now on international wear your vest day now for those watching in the united states 
of course in the United States vest is actually waistcoat so a waistcoat yes a waistcoat in American English is vest but here in England in British English vest is this which is a type of undergarment and I must say I think we wear them very well we wear them very well Pedro hello Pedro hello Pedro you see Steve today looking very sexy says <laughs> take off everything oh dear well how do you know how do you know that Steve has anything on anyway under there he might be completely naked down there for all you know I might be yes <laughs> who let that turkey in here <laughs> mr. Duncan is that the last that... turkey in the shop <laughs> if only we had a swimming pool we could dive into afterwards yes instead <laughs> instead we have nothing just my sweet sweet mm. tears we could swim in my tears you see oh there's lots of all sorts of birthday wishes for you flowers Pedro sent you lots of flowers lots of flowers in fact lots of flowers lots and lots of flowers that, red ones that is and yellow ones uh, those look like sunflowers mm. oh, Pedro is certainly sending lots of flowers yeah I think so well Mr. how nice mr. Steve yes. would, would would you like to watch yourself having a paddle no well what about you out there in YouTube land would you like to see mr. Steve having a paddle they've seen it before haven't they yes but this is really funny this is sped up this is amusing I, I'm, I think you've forgotten this Steve I think you've forgotten all about this video <laughs> here it is mr. Steve having a paddle And there it was that was mr. Steve having a paddle do you remember that Steve I do yeah. was that at the same time wait <laughs> again was that at the same time that you filmed when we were making the sandcastle it is we're going to show that later on because I not feel I feel what do you mean not that again well, there might be people who haven't seen it just because you've seen something 20 times doesn't mean other people haven't seen it mr. Steve come on just to just control yourself for goodness sake I think the heat the heat is going to Steve's brain somebody said that we need a glass of champagne Ooh, I'm not sure about that but thank you for all the flat well you should be thanking people for all the flowers there yes. are lots of flowers I mean it's my birthday today Beatrice and Pedro have sent you flowers uh, Maha has sent you flowers you know I need some glasses to be able to read this screen yes I think you do uh, we, we, we were talking Mason. about we were talking about me getting older I think it's Mr. Steve who needs who needs glasses. Malihan Nazrat has sent you lots of flowers. Uh, Florence That's has better. sent you flowers. Lots of flowers. Corrie J has sent you flowers. So somebody started a trend here with the flowers. I'm <laughs> guessing. I'm guessing Pedro was the first. He was. But uh, is it wrong? Is it wrong for real? us? To, is it wrong for us to be standing here in our vests? because this is what we do you see in England on a hot day so all we are doing is showing you something that is traditional here in England so on a hot day many men will just wear their vests outside and some men will also take their tops off <coughs> and some people will sneeze as well like Mr. Steve is demonstrating there that was very good I'm waiting for something oh Daisy cow hello Daisy cow I'm waiting for something right there Steve Daisy cow something more important than your bless you Daisy cow has sent a donation on the live chat how lovely how lovely is that I think that's amazing thank you very much for that isn't it lovely birthday gift live by the way Mosen 
congratulations Mosen. oh by the way also Mosen, thank you very much for your lovely video that you sent you put it on youtube and i saw it this morning very nice it's I very you know. i haven't had time to sort all of this out i've had so many messages so many things happening this morning and then of course i had to open the gift that mr steve gave me a wonderful gift well and, and also i suppose we should also show one of the cards that i received <laughs> from, yes. from mr steve's mother so this is from mr steve's mum thank you mr steve's mum for your... not watching unfortunately thank you very much to mr steve's mum for your lovely card isn't that lovely with little ships sailing on the sea near a harbour so there it is a lovely little card from mr. Steve's mother if I do that too much people might start feeling seasick so there it is have a wonderful birthday from mr. Steve's mum to me thank you very much and also there was a little bit of money inside as well I can buy myself some new underpants finally yes in in uh, England we have a reputation particularly the men for not being very stylish no especially when it's hot when it's hot British men usually wear this don't they they normally wear their shirts vests their vests which normally is worn under clothes although nobody really wears vests anymore under no. clothes uh, but when I grew up, you did. You always had a vest underneath to keep you warm. <laughs> Even in the summer, people still wore a vest. Because British people traditionally didn't want to expose themselves. Traditionally. Uh, in the past. Um, and uh, so they will also wear a handkerchief on their head with uh, the corners tied in knots. Yes. And they will also wear sandals with their socks on yes black socks black socks with sandals yes so shorts sandals and black socks this, this is, is what british men wear english men we are talking about english men i think english more, more because we're english men you see he's an english man and i'm an english man in fact i am the english man who teaches english in fact i was the first ever english english man on youtube ever to teach English did you know that I'm sure you well you do now anyway mr. Steve also bought me another gift this morning a couple of things some chocolates of course I can't bring the chocolates outside to show you because they would melt because you've eaten them no because oh. they they would melt it's you about thir it's about 36 degrees yeah it's actually gone up look I'm going to show you it's going up it's gone up again yes What's the temperature now? 36. 36 degrees here in our gazebo. It's actually gone up two degrees since we came online, Mr. <laughs> Duncan. So what time is it now? In half an hour, it's gone up nearly two degrees. I would say one and a half degrees. I still can't believe we're doing this live stream in our vests. <laughs> Nor can a lot of people. <laughs> it's, they are. it's so hot. I can't begin to tell you how hot it is. We couldn't wear a shirt. It's, it's so hot. It's, it must be 31 degrees just the normal temperature today it must be around 31 degrees well it's 36 in here and the humidity that's the important thing the amount of water in the atmosphere must be over 95 percent yeah so it's very because we had a this rains this uh, tropical all i can describe it as a tropical um storm that's last it night. it was a storm i've got an interesting story about uh, uh, thunder and lightning storms an interesting story about yes. thunder and lightning storms yes now ladies and gentlemen boys and girls and little animals with large eyes if you like this story that mr. Steve is about to tell you please give us a thumbs up okay so tell us the story about thunder and lightning that, that mr. Steve I, I have a feeling this might be a memory a memory from mr. Steve's past well I um, phoned my mother last night. Okay. And when I, as I phoned her, well, I, I was speaking. She was. She's got this tablet, so she? she can do, you know, like FaceTime. She has an iPad. She has an iPad, so we can do. Which you know, I'm amazed that at 89 she can use this. It's wonderful. So while I was on, a thunderstorm had just started. It had. 
so I could hear all the claps of thunder and of course my mother was feeling a bit you know it's not very nice when you're on your own and there's thunder and lightning outside particularly Fun. if you're getting on in years <laughs> uh, but then my mum recalled a story that uh, because uh, when we used to grow up we'd always <laughs> unplug everything if there was a storm we'd switch everything off take the plugs out and then we'd always pull the aerial out of the television. That's it. Because there was always this fear that the, the lightning would come down the aerial and blow your television up. Yes, which which sometimes would happen. I think that actually did sometimes happen. Not often, but sometimes. So, so when you're having a thunder and lightning storm, the lightning can strike anywhere. So this is something my parents used to do. Well, I was going to say we would take all of the electricity, the, the plugs and the aerial out of the back of the television. And uh, something that my mum recalled from her childhood was that her mother yeah. always used to cover up any mirrors. Oh. She used to go around the house, anything that was glass inside, like a mirror, she would put a cloth over it if there was a thunderstorm. Because there was, I don't know whether that was superstition or whether it was fear that, that the lightning might somehow smash the mirror and glass would go everywhere. But she would shut all the curtains, all the glass had to be covered up. Mm. So you'd cover up mirrors, you'd shut the curtains, everything like that. Okay. Because I think the claps of thunder. So I wonder if anybody else in different countries who are watching, if you have a thunderstorm, mm. what precautions do you take yes is there any is there anything you do you yeah. do during a thunderstorm and a lightning storm maybe you cover the mirrors in your house or maybe you you hide under the bed with your fingers in your ears or maybe you throw out all of the plates maybe you get all of your plates and throw them all out into the garden <laughs> I don't know but here I don't think we do it anymore well I don't think we well, we certainly don't pull the air. Well, a lot of televisions, of course, aren't directly connected to an aerial on the roof anymore. Uh, well, many are. Uh, oh, well, so, well, many are still because we, we we have an aerial. Do we? Right. I thought it was all technology now. You didn't need an aerial you anymore. D you do still need an aerial to, to get okay. television pictures, unless, of course, you have cable. So cable, yes, of course, you don't need that. You don't need to have an aerial. But many people still use aerials to get their television signal, including us. So what do you do if there's, if there's a thunderstorm? Do you unplug your television, take the aerial out? What do you do? Do you cover the mirrors in the house? Mm -hmm. Please tell us. We'd like to know. Apparently we should go sunbathing for a little while, says Alessandra. That is a good idea, but Mr. Steve is very sensitive and very, very, very choosy about when he exposes his body to things so he doesn't like getting too much sunlight on his skin or else he's well what he thinks is he'll shrivel up like a raisin like a little raisin in the sun well that is what happens mr duncan because uh, if you expose yourself to the ultraviolet rays of the sun mm -hmm. then your skin will age and it's cumulative cumulative that's yes. a good word for you cumulative cumulative something that happens over a period of time yes. so it doesn't happen all at once when we say something is cumulative it happens over a period of time gradually and so each so, thing adds on to the one before yes so it so it gets worse and worse as time goes on you get more of something and the effect gets worse and worse so if you expose yourself to the sun, every time you do it, you age your skin a little. Uh, but if you do it one day, then the next day, you don't really notice the effects because it's gradual. But over a period of years, the damage is cumulative and irreversible. Mm. Talking, so of, talking of thunder and lightning, we have some messages about that. Yes. Nesser says we close all of the doors in the house. Ah, right. So when there is a, a lightning storm, a thunder and lightning storm, sometimes you can have lightning without any rain. So quite often we, we imagine that thunder and lightning would also bring rain. But sometimes you can have what they call an electrical storm. So the electric, the static is in the clouds however there is no rain so sometimes it does happen luciana says that uh, uh my grandmother used to do the same in brazil she covered the mirrors but also forbade us to tell thunderstorm stories 
because according to her, it would attract the light, night lightning. So, so, so the stories about it. Is that what you're saying? Yes. So, yes, you mustn't, you mustn't sit there, I presume, and say, "Oh, I remember this thunderstorm yeah. ten years ago when the the, the, the tree oh, I see. down you, the road got struck by so lightning." So you should not, you should not tell stories about it. Yes. Oh, I see. Talk now. about that's it. in case you attract the lightning. See, that's a superstition. Uh, Flower says, why cover the mirrors? Well, we don't really know why. I think it's a superstition. Hmm. I think people of a certain generation used to cover the mirrors when there, was a, when there was a thunderstorm because I think there's a fear that the mirror might explode or something. Hmm. I they, don't know. Maybe it might. I think maybe the theory is there that it might attract the lightning to the mirror. Or if if the lightning strikes the mirror, then the reflection will will strike you. I don't know. It's it's an interesting one. But my my grandparents used to do the same thing. They used to cover their mirrors whenever there was a thunder and lightning storm. Very interesting. Yes, Nisa says we we have to take the morning sunlight for a few minutes as it's a source of vitamin D. That is correct. That exactly. is correct. There is nothing wrong with that. A little bit of sunshine. No, you do, yeah, that is fine. If you know, 10 minutes a day, I think is all you need to get enough vitamin D. Some people say that we are a, a little ray of sun, sunlight. That's what they say, Steve. They say you and I together are a little ray of sunlight shining across the internet with a oh, little nice. Isn't that lovely? Would you like to see one of the gifts that Mr. Steve gave me this morning? Today is my birthday. I'm very generous. I am 22 today. 22. If you turn my real age upside down and then look at it in a mirror. So if you reverse my age upside down and then look at it, that's actually my real age. But I'm 22 today. 77 that doesn't make it what what's 22 reversed around the other 22 way? you 22. turn 22 upside down upside down yes. and then put it in the mirror then put it in a mirror so it would be yes uh, oh you see 55 isn't that clever it's clever Mr. is that Duncan? clever so even though I'm old now my brain is still working I have some brain cells left there are some up there rattling around like peas in a tin can helen says she's okay and better than good good well better than good is always good as far as i'm concerned you can always be worse than bad that's bad that's not very good but being better than good ah, palmyra says in the past in my country mirrors were covered in case of death somebody dies at home yeah. ah so maybe that's what it's connected with maybe there's the fear of death with a thunderstorm. Oh, I so see. So you cover the mirrors to stop anything bad happening. Interesting. Maybe that's the superstition. OK, interesting. Thank you for that, uh, Pound Mirror. That's, uh, we always like to know where these superstitions come from. So that, that answers uh, our question and also somebody else who asked earlier, why do you cover the mirrors? Flower asked that. Well, it looks like Pound Mirror has given us the answer. Oh, here's another one, Steve, as well. When someone dies in your family... Um, it is traditional for people to close their curtains. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think I mentioned that. <coughs> I don't know if it happens in, in other countries, but here, I'm just bringing it up because it's interesting to me. Yes, uh, we disconnect all electrical appliances, says uh, Jajendra Buta. And uh, yes, uh, I usually unplug the television because I had one broken. In a thunderstorm, says Anna. Hmm. So it can happen. So it can happen. Lightning can strike power cables. In fact, at the start of the week, we had a thunderstorm and it did knock our electricity out. We actually lost electricity, didn't we? It went off for a few seconds, definitely, but not enough to, to, to cause any damage. Hmm. Uh, you should avoid being in the mountains. Uh, and look for shelter. I mean, they always say we're under a thunderstorm. You should never shelter under a tree. Nope. That's uh, it. Because the tree will often get struck by lightning. Mm. And then if you're nearby, it's curtains for you. Yes, There's definitely. an idiom. I slipped in an idiom, Mr Duncan. Although the chances of you being struck by lightning are 
are very very small you've I've, got you've got more chance i think you have more chance of winning the lottery no i think it's the other way around oh is it yes oh i see so there is less chance less chance you've got more chance of being struck by lightning than winning the lottery oh i see <laughs> definitely i think so because uh, i think every year uh, lots and lots of people get struck by lightning wow. far more people than win the lottery i don't like the sound of that i might be wrong about that but i, I think you know I think that is true. Can't believe it. That's incredible. Mr. Steve bought me a lovely gift today. And here is one of the gifts. This is a book that I mentioned the other week, in fact. Ah. And Steve bought the book for me. I have a new book to read. I was listening. I thought, mm, Mr. Duncan likes that book. Note to self. Yes. Note to self. You say that when you want to remember something. It's a phrase. Note to self. I will remember to get Mr. Duncan that book. And the book mentioned. is, the book is, this is the book that Steve has bought for me. English in. The, the, the Madness of Crowds by Douglas Murray, where he takes lots oh. of things from society, attitudes, and also the way people view certain subjects, certain social issues. And this is the book. So this is the book that Steve bought for me this morning. Thank you, Steve. Also, it is hardback as well so i like hardback books because they last longer and also they are a little bit more expensive i suppose but thank you steve for your lovely gift thank you very much i look forward to reading it i mean you look forward to reading there it. there is even a little message inside from steve a lovely little message isn't that nice you've got to put a message in a book if you buy a book and, for somebody and also the price is still on it is it this is one thing Steve often does. I'm bad at that. Steve always buys gifts for people and quite often he will forget to take the price tag or the price label off the gift. How many times have you done that? Lots of times. Many times. Can Ms. I mention a wonderful name? OK. We've got somebody in Germany watching, says happy birthday. Happy birthday to me, it's my birthday. And his name is William von Baskerville. Oh, yes. Uh, well, Mr. Baskerville has been on here before. Really? Yes. What a wonderful name. I love the name Baskerville. It always brings to light in my mind the famous story by Arthur Conan Doyle, the Hound of the Baskervilles. You see? Sherlock Holmes. Very good. Yeah, very nice. You are a, a learned literary man. It Mr. happens. Duncan. It happens sometimes. By the way, do you want to do you want to hear an interesting fact or see one? Yes. What is the smallest mammal in the world? The smallest mammal. The smallest mammal in the world, Steve. Now, Steve isn't Some prepared. Kind of pygmy mouse or something like Steve that. Steve isn't prepared. Does for the this? name start with pygmy? No. The smallest mammal in the world. Let's have a look. No, I know what's happening. Everyone's googling now. Don't you? Don't don't you Google? Don't cheat. Let me guess. <laughs> I think I might get it in about fifteen seconds' time. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's got to be some little little vole or something like oh, well, that. You're, you're you're almost right. You're almost right. Imagine something that that has wings. Something that has wings. Um, well, yes. OK, I'm Is going... It, uh, go on, tell me. <laughs> Here's the answer. <laughs> the cock is hot. I think, I think our cock is very hot today. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Keep it clean, Mr Duncan. The Keep small, it clean. The smallest... It is clean. That is my little cockerel. Ah, it's it's hot. Going. Here we go. So the, the smallest mammal in the world is this guy. Oh. Do you know what it's called? It looks like a it looks like a, a bat. It is a bat. Oh. It is a certain type of bat called the bumblebee bat. Does because, it uh, eat bumblebees? No, it doesn't, but it's not much larger than a bumblebee. It's that small. It is the smallest mammal in the world and, and of course mammals have certain traits certain things that define them as a mammal and this animal is the smallest look at that steve isn't that lovely that. it's so tiny 
can so it fly it can fly it is a bat it is found in thailand there are only around five thousand of them left in the world so their numbers are dropping quite dramatically but they are so lovely isn't that just the cutest thing ever a little bumblebee bat so there it is the smallest mammal on the planet whilst we are asking questions because we are talking about the English language I suppose we should talk about things to do with English here is a sentence that I'm going to show you Steve and I want you to tell me what is special about this sentence so have a look on the screen right now she told him that she loved him but there is something very special about that particular she told him that she loved him uh, what is special about that mr. Duncan mm. she told him that she loved him so yes. it's a past event yes so is... we can tell from that sentence that it's something that she said to a man um, in the past mm. she told him that she loved him so it's a past event is that what's special about it no there is something you can actually do to this sentence there is something you can do to this sentence that is very interesting and special and that's what makes this this particular English sentence very very unusual so she told she told him that she loved him however there is something you can do to this sentence and it's very unusual that you can do this to this sentence I don't know mr. Duncan mm. interesting. interesting can you change one of the she's to a he and get a completely different meaning uh, well you could you could reverse the genders but I that's said, not what's special no because you could do that with any sentence if there are genders mentioned uh, give us a clue give us a clue well you add something to you that sentence something. What, like a, a letter or a word a word uh, didn't <laughs> she told him that she didn't Oh, no, that wouldn't make sense that wouldn't be grammatically correct okay, I will give you another clue there is one word that you can enter anywhere in the sentence ah. and it will still be grammatically correct there is one word you can you can add to this sentence and wherever you put it this sentence will still be grammatically correct oh, mm. an actual word yes a word elephant <laughs> no not, not elephant ele okay. elephant she well, elephant told elephant him elephant that no you elephant. only you only add it once <laughs> okay oh you only add it once yes. okay mr Duncan. so you can add one word anywhere in that sentence and it will always be correct as a grammatical sentence hmm i'm thinking i'm thinking uh let's see if anybody else has, has managed to to guess it yes it's an interesting one one word from the English language that you could fit in there anywhere in that sentence once and it would still be grammatically correct all I can say is I wish I had shaved my chest I'm very aware of my my very unmanly chest hair this is not very manly I'm sorry about that I have some chest hair but not much just a little bit now Steve doesn't have any because because he shaves his chest you see so because he's because he's so vain he's so uh, vain he shaves everywhere while we're thinking he about shaves that, he shaves everywhere uh, William von Baskerville says it's where his name comes from is the name of the rose from uh, Umberto Eco oh, okay then. not sure what that is but that's obviously the the Arthur Conan Doyle story was just took that name yes but that's not where it originates from no it's a great name by the way it's, it's one a of those great names it's it's it, it sounds like a name that has status Baskerville it sounds like a very important very uh, it, it's a name that has impact it has an impact I think so welcome from you uh, from Uruguay happy birthday says uh, Mary Alba hello Mary Alba nice from to see Uruguay. you here that's... it's a little bit different today we are going to have a break in a moment we're going to go to the beach 
for a few moments and then we will be back oh something else I haven't mentioned Steve today we will be playing the sentence game the sentence game coming up in the second half of today's live stream we are playing the sentence game Steve can you believe it but one we are... word that fits in I don't think anyone's got it yet no nope. uh, had never is I will uh, tell you I will tell you in a few moments ooh, we've got to wait have we yes right now let's go to the beach would you like to go to the beach this is something I showed about three four weeks ago I think four weeks ago I showed this but I couldn't resist showing it again here we go off to the beach and once more you can see mr. Steve running into the sea as we spend a little time on the beach and then we will be back with more of your messages and also the sentence game and the answer to my little question Here we are, Mr. Duncan <laughs> and Mr. Steve. But where are we? We are now on the beach. On the beach at a typical British beach scene. It's freezing cold. We're wrapped up in, in, in woolen winter clothes. The sun's out. It looks lovely, but it's actually very cold. So I've got the beach towel. And what have you got, Mr. Duncan? I have my spade oh. so I, I can dig in the sand because <laughs> we are on a sandy beach. And I have my bucket as well, my little bucket. So I can put the sand into the bucket and I can build a little sand castle here. <laughs> and I've got the same, matching. I've got the blue ones, you've got the red ones. So, are we going to start building sand castles, Mr. Duncan? I'm all excited. I think Mr. Steve is very eager. Even though the wind is blowing, it is quite windy on the beach. We are very close to the sea. We are on the Welsh coast in a place called Aberdovey. It's very nice normally, but unfortunately, it's a little cool and quite windy. What else have you got there, Steve? I've got a beach towel. Yeah, Mr. which I'm now using to keep warm with. Do you that... like Do you like Steve's beach towel? It's... I'm using it as a scarf to keep warm. <laughs> so let's start building some sandcastles. I do like to be beside the seaside oh I do like to be beside the sea all over the UK during the summer months people come and they visit the seaside they go to the beach I don't know what it is about being near the sea the sights the sounds the weather and also the fresh air to be honest with you there is a lot of fresh air around today because it's so windy and look at the sea isn't it beautiful in fact I think Mr. Steve is going to go into the water for a paddle 
you paddle in the water, you splash around in the sea. All that splashing around in the sea has made Mr. Steve feel very hungry, so he decides to go to the local chip shop. There's nothing like a bag of fish and chips, piping hot from the fryer, with extra salt and vinegar. Mr. Steve appears to be enjoying his chips. Mmm, delicious. Do you know what this bird is? It's a seagull, a very common bird that can often be found near the seaside or on the coast. We decided to see what would happen if we threw some of the chips on the ground. Needless to say, the result was chaos. You will often see seagulls at the seaside. So our day trip to the seaside is almost at an end as we walk off together into the sunset. Hmm, oh, lovely. It's not lovely. For those who just joined us, welcome. Yes, we are live from England. It is just after three o'clock here. I don't know what time it is where you are because I'm not there, you see. And this is English Addict Live. <laughs> now, Steve. You did such a good job at the start of today's live stream. Thank you. I, I have to be honest with you. I was watching. I did catch a little bit of it. And you were, you were, as, as President Trump would say, tremendous, 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 amazing, great, superb. You were all of those things. OK, so you, you were you were very good and very professional. So I wondered. Before we play the sentence game, would you like to show something else? Because I know you did a little bit of preparation, didn't you? 
did it's I? with some well I can see a great big pile of paper in front of you no that was just a visual oh I see there's uh, all I did was show all the old idioms the piles of idioms because do you remember in the old days the old days of what I used to before, oh, us. I used to put these up didn't I yes. and explain what the idios were idioms <laughs> idios <laughs> Let's get this show on the road. Put a plan into action. Oh, I see. Decorating. Start a, com a ceremony, a conference. Yes, that's a good one. I like that one, Steve. So I used to do that, didn't I? Yes. And you, you would... I remember when Steve used to show the flash words as well. A long time ago. You would just stand with a piece of paper and read it. And that was recorded. It wasn't even live. So, yeah. So what about this one, Steve? Keep the ball, ball rolling. It just means keep things going. That's it. Keep things going. Yes. What keep the ball rolling. Keep things going. What about this one, Steve? I can't read it. Put your best foot forward. See, that was from uh, the idioms connected with uh, feet ah. or body parts. You see, they're, yes. all in, they're all in piles. You see, they're, I organise them all. <laughs> you have some nice piles here. Put your best foot forward. That means do the best job you can. What's a fair weather friend? Fair with a friend is a friend that only wants to be around you when uh, times are good. Yes. Maybe when you've got some money, uh, when you're happy and going out somewhere, going to parties. But when something uh, that upsets you happens, like somebody, you know, you lose your job or something like that, they don't want to be around because they only want to be around you when the weather is fair, when things are going well. Is there a certain phrase that we can use with this word? Uh, limelight you can say that you're in the limelight yes so where does this come from this this particular phrase uh, that is uh, uh, that is from uh, that's like a from a theater that's from the theater hmm. when they used to light the stage with light from burning lime hmm. so uh, that was the only type of lighting they had on a stage before electric lights hmm. they used to burn lime yes and uh, it would shine light onto the actors and so, actresses so as the idiom to be in the limelight means you are on show you are yes. you are uh, visible to lots of people and of course a person can also steal the limelight yes they can take away the attention like mr steve so today mr steve was trying to steal my limelight you see he was trying to take my limelight away that's just not possible i don't think so william von can i make a comment uh, you can william von baskerville i could say that name all day it's a great name um it says that we look like the pet shop boys wow really well <laughs> and it reminds him from a phrase from one of the songs you got the brain you got the look let's make lots of money but uh, uh, william says who is who <laughs> who's <laughs> the one with the looks <laughs> <laughs> who's the <laughs> one with the brains well <laughs> I think that's obvious. Yes, it's me. You mean you've got both? Oh, someone, someone tried to catch me out earlier by asking what the smallest bird in the world is. And that's, that's easy. That's, that, that's another bird, that, another creature that's named after a bumblebee. So the bumblebee hummingbird is actually the smallest bird. It's very tiny. It's a type of hummingbird. And it's called the bumblebee hummingbird. Rosa asks, mm -hmm. will we go to the beach for your birthday? <laughs> uh, we are doing something tomorrow. However, our original plan <laughs> has unfortunately gone wrong. And I'm sure you know why. I'm not going to explain why. But everyone at the moment is trying to make their plans and arrangements. And as you know, we are living through th very strange times still. So here we are in August, August the 12th, and we are still living through very strange times here, but also around the world as well. So we were going to go somewhere yesterday, or sorry, tomorrow. So yesterday we decided to go somewhere on Thursday. Unfortunately, most of those plans have had to be cancelled because we wanted to do something, but we've been told that we can't do it because of you know what the thing that steve said earlier <laughs> a few people have asked um where is that beach the beach and, uh, a few people have guessed correctly or already remember from before mm. it is in wales yes and uh, it is probably about 
a two hour drive I think probably so. less than that yes but at the moment everyone is flocking to Wales if you flock somewhere mm. if lots of people are flocking somewhere it's just like lots of birds all going. It means lots of people are all going to this one place. Yes. I mean, uh, this let's is what flock to the beaches. This is what the beaches look like at the moment in the UK. So many of the beaches around England, uh, southern England especially. So the, that is what the beaches look like. So they they are full of people, packed, packed. I like, <laughs> and as you said. They, they, the people have flocked to the beach. They have gone there in very large numbers. So when, when people go somewhere in a large number, many people at the same time, they flock. Just to, like birds. Yes. And there you can see lots and lots of people now on the beach, which is probably happening at this very moment whilst we're standing here. So if we went to the beach now, I think, Steve, there would be hundreds, if, if not thousands, of people on the beach. We're not going to the beach. We're not going to the beach. Temperature check. It's gone up another half a degree. Yes. It's is it? now 30, definitely is 36. Yes. Dead on, where it was 35 and a half before. Yes. So it's 36 degrees, 36 Celsius, should I say, under the gazebo. That's where we're standing, protecting ourselves from those harmful UV rays. We don't want to age prematurely. So thank you, Steve, for your lovely gifts this morning. I had some chocolate from Steve. I can't show you the chocolate because it's too hot. It will just melt away. Can I also say a big thank you to those who sent messages for my birthday on Facebook and also some email messages and also some donations came through as well just in case you want to send a little birthday donation you are more than welcome to do so i will put the address very quickly on the screen so there it is just in case you want to make a little birthday donation to say mr duncan thank you very much for teaching us on youtube for for almost 14 years mr duncan mm -hmm. It's not just you that has a birthday today. Really? No. Someone else? Anthony Biss. OK. It's his birthday today as well. Anthony? Yes. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to Anthony Biss. Yeah. Fantastic. Happy People have been saying he must have said it earlier on. Uh, so, yes. Happy birthday, Mr Duncan. It is also my birthday today. Can you believe it? No, oh, that's amazing. So if it is your birthday, well, thank you, Anthony Biss. And yes, you share your birthday with many famous people. <laughs> One do, in particular. Do you know what I'm doing there? Yes. Can you see I what do. I'm Yes, you, you celebrate your birthday with, with very famous people. Mm, very nice. Lovely. So there's two people. Anybody else watching right now? Whose birthday is today? I've been asked to give the answer to that question that I asked earlier. She told him that she loved him. Now, this is an interesting word. Oh, sorry, an interesting sentence. I'm becoming distracted. There we go. We're back. <laughs> I must sort that camera out because something is going wrong there. You see, something is going wrong with that piece of equipment. We're back. Yes, she told him that she loved him. There is a certain English word that you can enter anywhere, anywhere in that sentence, and it will be correct. The word is only. Only, only. I've got it. I got it, Mr. Duncan. You said it after me. <laughs> only. Ah. Only she told him that she loved him. She only told him that she loved him. She told him only that she loved him. She told him that only she loved him. And so on. She told him she only loved him. Yes. She told him that she loved only him. Yes. Wow, that's clever, Mr. She Duncan. told him that she loved him only. Even on the end. Yes. So you can put the word only 
anywhere even at the beginning even at the beginning and also the end you can put only in any of those spaces and it will always be grammatically correct so now you know Well, that's clever isn't it but every time you put the only in there it means something slightly different that's it so you are using the sentence in different ways so even the meaning changes slightly yes but it is always grammatically correct she only told him that she loved him yes so she told him only that she loved him she told him only she yes. only told yes, him but yes so yes only can go anywhere she told only him yes that she loved him she only told him that she loved him that's it according to cory you can also put madly madly yes i suppose so because you are inferring a type of behavior so the way mm. someone says something or the way someone does something you can do it madly i'm but not it sure doesn't it doesn't fit in every space no i don't think you can use it in every space in that sentence so only is the common word that you can place anywhere in that sentence anywhere it, in that sentence yeah. and grammatically it will still be correct yes, oh, that's an interesting game have you got any other ones i do have another game and it is a game that i like to play sometimes steve do you know the name of the game the sentence game that, that's what it's called it is the sentence game would you like to play the sentence game it is a hot day it is also my birthday as well and today we are looking at words connected to birthdays so all of the missing words are words that can be used to express or talk about birthdays or having a birthday or things connected with having a birthday so here we go are you ready let's play <gasps> ready Steve let's play the, the sentence, sentence game. game. Ding, 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 ding. We are playing the sentence game. <laughs> All is it of proving to be popular. <laughs> the sentence game is is very popular. I have to be honest with you. This is a special birthday edition. We have some words connected to having your birthday. So if you have a birthday today, this is just for you. It's also just for me, you see, because it's my birthday today. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. The sentence game using birthday words. Ah. Some of these are easy. Some of them are not so easy, Mr. Steve. Some of them are simple, some of them not so simple. Some of them are easy to guess, and some of them are not so easy to guess. I think you see where I'm going there. So you're going to see a sentence. There will be a word missing from the sentence. You have to tell me what the word is. And they are all connected with birthdays. Having a birthday, celebrating, things that you do things that you might see things that you might have and they are all connected with birthdays so here we go ah ah here we go then steve this is the first one the first sentence game with their smartphones nokia was late to the something mm with their oh. smartphones nokia was late to the something so we don't know what the first letter is all we know is that it's a word connected with birthdays yes so I it's said. it's <laughs> i nearly gave the what i thought was the answer away then yeah that's it <laughs> so it's five letters <laughs> do, you, do you realize that this this i don't know why but but now we have the sentence game on the screen steve this looks a little bit rude as it looks like it almost if we did this and did this it would look like that we were naked 
<laughs> we're not by the way we're not naked so what nokia obviously is uh or a manufacturer of phones yes uh so we're saying that uh, they're late mm. to manufacturing smartphones because mm. they just used to have the old-fashioned uh phones <laughs> the old-fashioned phones with the cable <laughs> hello 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 can you put me through to my grandmother please oh hello so other manufacturers so although nokia phones were very popular in the 90s mm. for example yeah and they made a lot of money the, com the company actually went bust i think well they they still exist nokia still exists but they sold a lot of their a lot of their company off to other other areas uh, but i still think they are involved in telecommunications so I, th I still think that they do things like cell phone towers and communication equipment and software. So I think Nokia are still active, but I, 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 they did actually sell part of the company off. But I think the, the phone manufacturing side, I, th but still th I think they make um, non smart. They do make smartphones, but they probably do make them, but not not for sort of. Not for uh, the UK or, or America. I don't think they. No, make. they still exist. Uh, no, 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 I meant phones. Actual. Yes, phones. they still exist. Nokia phones. But they're very popular now. Aren't there they? is actually a Nokia smartphone now. Yes. They, they, now it, there is. I know. They released one last year. The sentence would suggest. Yes, with their smartphone. <laughs> oh, oh, Mr. Steve. Oh, so hot. I don't know how people uh, in hot climates can have big hair sorry big hair because if you have lots of hair on your head oh i see it makes you very hot doesn't it <laughs> big hair uh so i think if you've got like a, you know like long lots hair. of hair long, long hair. hair like for example pedro yes well Let's, pedro has long hair Pedro has long hair he lives in a hot country how does he cope yes how do women cope with their hairdos how do you stay cool in a hot climate if you have long hair but then, of course, if you live in a hot climate, quite often you will have air conditioning in the room to keep you nice and cool, you see. And, of course, uh, people, if they've got long hair, will tie it tie it back. Will tie it back, won't they? Yes. Into a bun to take, because if your neck's exposed, then it'll cool down quickly. Yes. Uh, so, yes. <laughs> the, uh, oh, someone's got a... Uh, Sandra has the, uh, the smartphone Nokia 1100. The 1100. Uh, 1100, that's probably, yes. Uh, Luciana says, my favourite brand was Nokia. Yes, it was. In fact, I've still got about three old Nokia phones, which still, well, I don't use them for phoning with. Okay. But I use one as an alarm. <laughs> he uses it as a hammer. <laughs> I use one as an, oh, I think the, the thunderbugs are out, Mr Duncan. I'm okay. Itching. You were saying? I know this is nothing to do with the discussion on Nokia phones, but it's turning into that. Uh, let's have the answer, Mr. Duncan. With their smartphones, Nokia was late to the something. Let's see who got it right first. So when lots of people are doing something and you are not doing it, but then suddenly you start doing it, but everyone else is enjoying success. And this is one of the things that happened to Nokia. They actually, they were a little slow to to adapt their technology to smartphone technology which, which of course uh, did not do the company much good i used to have a nokia phone as well everybody they, had one didn't they were they? everywhere and there was that one there was that one type of nokia phone that everyone had and it was like a house brick it was just you could throw it at the wall you could drop it and it would always and the batteries lasted for about a week yes yes i i i think a lot of people do miss the old Nokia phone, but, yes. but I'm sure some people still use them. Well, I I'd have to, I, you know, I'd, I'd have to check that out at a Nokia smartphone, see what it's like. Hmm. Shat. Uh, go on. Shat. Shat. No, that's what I wanted to say. I just wanted to say shat. Shall we have a look at the answer? Here comes and Miss Pilar. Got it. Was the first to get it right. Pilar Manzone. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you Pilar was the first person to get it right oh with their smartphones nokia was late to the <laughs> the answer is not cock they were late to the 
the missing word is bing oh party party they were late to the party so if you are late to the party this is an idiom that means you are late doing something or you were too slow doing something so lots of people are doing a certain thing in a certain way but you don't start doing it until much later when everyone else is having all of the success so that is a statement that is also well it's also a fact as well That's and if you are late to a party hmm. a birthday party for example yes. then you will have missed a lot of the action a lot of the fun yes so i love that expression so to be late to the party means you miss all of the best parts or you miss all of the opportunities that come with something that is the first sentence game shall we have another sentence game mr steve go on okay then here's the second one i think that was quite easy but we will have some hard ones later Covered in insects. Ooh. mr steve is being eaten alive by I know i'm attractive but i don't want to be attractive to insects <laughs> Ah, uh, there's no answer to that. Here we go, Steve. Oh. <laughs> he wants to have his... Something. Something and eat it. He wants to have his something and eat it. Something you might have on a birthday. Yes. <laughs> OK, Steve. Well, I'm just saying that's, that's what it. it's related to. It is related to birthdays. It's not starting in a certain letter. No, like there's, normally does. there's no certain letter. But we are talking about birthday words anything connected to birthdays I suppose yes he wants to have his something and eat it of course she because we have to be equal this is 2020 where everyone has equal rights around the world around the planet even little penguins shuffling around in the snow even they have equal rights in oh. the world lots of activity on the live chat for this one he wants to have his something and eat it or of course she wants to have her something and eat it well the answer's out there mr duncan i think you can stop it already really just yes just a sea of correct answers but my cock isn't ready it's still recovering from the last one I, well, I, I think you should finish it. I have to rest. Unfortunately, on a hot day, you have to rest your cock. You can't you can't have it pop up too often. <laughs> I think that joke's <laughs> getting a bit old, Mr. Duncan. There it is, Steve. He 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 cock a doodle dude all over you. <laughs> well, the first person to get it right was uh, Michel or Michael, I should say. Or Mikel. Or Mikel uh, uh, Victorine. Oh. was the first person to get it right but lots of people have got it correct congratulations Mikel the answer is and I will get I will let Steve explain this because you did such a good job this morning taking over when I was in my moment of despair because today is my birthday and I'm another year older oh my gosh here we go ready for the answer the answer is coming up right now Bing. correct a lot of people got that right so well done uh, so if you have your cake and eat it it means that you've got everything you've got the best of both worlds yes you've got uh, you've got everything mm. uh, so it's like saying um, well you explain it mr. Duncan okay I think well, the heat's going to my well may, maybe a married man maybe a man who is married to a woman maybe he also wants to have some girlfriends on the side so he might also want to go and see some girls at the weekend or maybe his secretary so he wants to have his cake and eat it he wants to enjoy all of the wonderful things that come with his marriage but he also wants to eat his cake as well he wants to enjoy all of the things I think in that situation it, it is quite often a negative thing quite often I don't think we use this ever positively no it, it's suggesting that you're a bit greedy mm. that uh, you you want everything uh, I mean you, you could use that at work couldn't you? you could use that in 
in lots of places where there are maybe a, a, a couple of things that you could have but to have both of them would be seen as as, as greedy or immoral uh, but uh, it's a whenever you there's a situation where you can have more than one thing mm. more normally two things isn't it yes can we think of another example that would work so um, uh, maybe a person who wants to have maybe a job that doesn't require much effort but they want to have a high salary yes so maybe I want to have a job where I don't have to do much but I also want to get paid a lot of money so you want to have your cake and eat it so you're being greedy and quite often unfair as well so any form of unfairness you could say that a person wants everything so all of the rewards they want they don't want to have to put any work into that situation so in the marriage the husband wants to go home and be comforted by his wife but also at the weekend he wants to go and visit his secretary and have a little bit of <coughs> slap and tickle you see so that's it that's I can't explain it any more than that any more clearly than that yes they're all related to birthdays yes there isn't there isn't a single letter today all of the things <laughs> I'm being eaten by a fly a fly is nibbling into one of my legs what's the temperature Steve it's 36 and a half yes so degrees centigrade or 98 degrees Fahrenheit it's 98 Fahrenheit in our little gazebo at the moment I so, wonder if it'll get to a hundred yeah see what I'm going to show you yes just to prove it hold it up slightly a bit more in fact I, sh shall I reach over with my very long arm there you go look at that so that is the temperature right now here Duncan, I think we'll have to finish early today. I'm it's, getting, it's bloody hot. I think I'm getting heat stroke. Oh. That's a heat stroke. That's a condition you get, we call it, when you have become so hot that your body is becomes just you just feel very, very ill. Yes, it is uh, overwhelmed. Yes, I think uh, you actually damage the metabolism of your body if mm. you spend too much time in the sun and, yes. and get too hot everything goes wrong uh, we call it heat stroke so you've got to go to bed for a couple of days to recover oh that sounds good uh, <laughs> yes with chocolate chocolate and lots and lots of hugs and snuggles here we go then here's another one steve we've got to do these we can't go until we've finished the sentence game that's the rule that's the rule we've got to follow the rule Here's another one, Steve. This one's, I think this one is, is also maybe easy. So again, related to uh, birthday birthdays. Thing, birthdays, anything connected to birthdays. There is no time like the something, she said. Ah. There is no time like the something, she said. So a word that's got a double meaning I may suggest yes there. this is a word that has more than one meaning you're right Steve you're right your strap is slipping I'm not just a pretty face <laughs> Steve's you know do you ever see that when a, when a woman is at a party and she's wearing a beautiful dress and her strap starts to go down like that you think oh oh ooh la la drink ooh. more water says Vitas ooh, I will. La, ooh la la ooh la la oh no we haven't got a cake I've just realized we don't have a cake we don't have a, a birthday cake here no no we don't have one we don't have a birthday cake but we do have lots of lovely chocolates that I think Steve we will be eating tonight or maybe straight after this live stream because I... we don't have uh, well we will have a cup of tea but I don't have any tea cakes okay uh, can your body actually dry out yes it can if you have too much sun or too much heat you you sweat so much you can become dehydrated I think I think Francesca is asking if we are oh so you're drinking water I'm uh, the word we would use is dehydrated mm. uh, so we would say that if you are sweating a lot and it's hot then uh, you would become dehydrated so your body would uh, 
would have not enough water this this water is warm it, i could i could make make a cup of tea with this it's almost boiling so welcome for those who don't know what this is this is english addict we talk about english we sometimes have some fun don't we we have fun and games and today it's my birthday and because of that we're in the garden and we are wearing our vests from now on august the 12th the 12th of august or as we call it here the glorious 12th as well and and don't forget also there is a big meteor shower taking place at the moment every year on my birthday in the heavens above there are little meteors or they call them meteoids did you know that i do now meteoids so a meteoid is just a little fragment of dust a little fragment that is floating around and it is all that remains of the tail of one particular comet that goes around the solar system i can't remember the name of the comet i think it's something tuttle i don't know but it's the perseids isn't it the perseid meteor meteor, meteor shower. shower every year on your birthday reaches its peak in the uk yes it's nice so every year on my birthday there is a beautiful meteor shower above the house well and we've got lots of correct answers mr duncan <laughs> i almost forgot i almost forgot we were playing the sentence game then <laughs> it completely slipped my mind we have lots of correct answers mm -hmm. I think, so i think you can uh, you can close this one mr duncan can i release the cock you can there is no time like the something she said <laughs> well done pilar you were the first well to get done it correct well done to everyone according to the live chat oh okay then well a, done a lot of people have got it right but uh, pilar was the first very quick on your uh, with your fingers um and the answer is mr duncan seven letters yes connected with with birthdays yes that the have double meaning yes we have we have a word here that has more than one meaning which we will explain in a moment after we reveal the answer which is bing present present there is no time like the present she said in that particular sentence she is saying there is no time like now so if you are going to do something in your life maybe something you are planning to do with your life there is no time like the present now is the best time to do it but of course a present is something that you give to somebody on their birthday a gift yes a present you you actually present you see so it has another word another use as well so to give something to hand something over you present you see you are offering yes. something so you present a present in the present <laughs> so now i am giving a gift you present a present in the present <laughs> and if I, uh, you give a presentation Yes. then you're then you're giving a speech yes so a presentation is a form of speech or maybe something that is being shown or demonstrated you are giving a presentation like this so we are presenting this live stream yeah. there is no time like the present don't wait until tomorrow because it may not come that's what they say i'm being attacked by i hope it will a fly it will we'll be fine it's gone up another half a degree mr duncan if you got that right congratulations well done here's another one steve here is i don't know if i can stay on my feet for much longer mr duncan really? I'm feeling are you quite, feeling tired i'm feeling quite overwhelmed by the heat oh, poor. i mean it's yes poor steve i need i need to lie down why don't you take a cool room why don't you take your vest off before the end take of today enough off before the end of today's live stream mr steve is going to take his vest off no i'm not and he's going to show you well we've already seen them anyway we've seen mr steve's hunky pectorals <laughs> 
anything but when you were running into the ocean earlier in slow motion you could see your hunky body <laughs> here's another one then would you like another sentence game okay let's do it shall we here is another one. Oh, we have we have more than one missing word here steve i think this one's Ooh. this one is a little bit more difficult ah she has a something for choosing the perfect something something yes you see birthday related words mm. first one's four letters then eight letters then five letters yes yes this one is a little harder you see i like to make you think even though it's a wednesday and also it's my birthday i'm still going to make you work i'm going to make you work she mm. has a something for choosing the perfect something something four eight five so letter. are all the words related to birthdays they are ah. yes so you have to think of the two things so in fact all of the words here are actually related to each other to make it even more interesting my brain is working very well today even though uh, i have reached the age of 22 upside down and then reversed I thought that was quite a good quite a good one she has a something for choosing the perfect something something but what is it Colonel um, says that it's uh, it's her nephew's birthday today oh okay uh, sorry, Connell, I don't... Yes, so it's it's their nephew's birthday today. Here's some Cameron. Cameron uh, happy birthday to Cameron. Cameron, happy birthday to you. He loves us both very much, according that's, to Connell. That's very nice. So thank you. <laughs> Maybe. It's nice to know we've got fans of all ages watching yes. us. So hello, Cameron. Or you. Happy birthday to you. You share your birthday with a very, very famous person. Very famous my camera has locked up right she has a <gasps> are we back yes i must sort that out because we have a technical problem technical you see. hitch a technical problem something is not working properly so <laughs> which is not good news really when you think about it it is not good mm. news at all birthday they've got to be words connected with birthdays they are all connected to birthdays think think of birthdays think of things that you have think of things that you do think of things that you might have to buy for someone as well so think of everything that you do everything you use yes you see yeah. mm, well, yes. I don't think we've got any correct answers mm. yet yes by the way, would you like to see the view? The view today is absolutely gorgeous. Look at this. People are getting, yes, lovely. What a lovely view. People are getting words, but they've got to be words that will be connected with a birthday. Mm. And presumably they're words that we haven't used in previous examples of the sentence game. That's correct. Today. Although it might be another way of expressing that thing, you see? It might be something oh, we've already right. used, but there is another word. A synonym. Yes. She, she has. has a something. For choosing the perfect. Something, something. We're looking for four, eight, and also five letters. Ah, well, yes. There are some correct answers coming through for at least one of them. Okay. Uh, and this is all connected to having a birthday to having a birthday they are all connected mm, well I wonder if that's correct yes so people are getting a lot of the correct answers uh, well I don't even know what the answer is because Mr Duncan doesn't tell me beforehand William asks can we have more of mr. Steve on the live chat no <laughs> oh okay <laughs> well I'm always here every Sunday yes so Steve is always here with us on Sunday and next week of course he's going back to work so he has to work you see so that's the problem so the reason why Steve isn't here during the week is because we have 
to let mr. Steve do his normal job the job that he gets paid for normally instead of being here but I will be here of course every Sunday Wednesday and Friday and mr. Steve will be joining us every Sunday that's when Steve is with us she has a something for choosing the perfect something something all connected with birthdays maybe you buy something for someone and maybe you have to do something with that thing that you buy what do you have to do with something when you buy something for a person what do you have to do with it there is something you have to do with that thing something mr. Steve had to do when he bought my gift he had to do something with it yes that is a big clue I'm sure someone must get it now because that clue was a whopper it was big ah ah I think Steve Steve has got it <laughs> Steve's got it sadly Steve you can't give the answer because because you're here you see it's not for you unfortunately <sighs> A few more seconds and then mr. Cockerell will say hello come on mr. Cockerell put us all out of our mystery oh, interesting yes we Valentina has got one of the words correct and also Imran as well and also Alex yes so we have a few people with the correct answer here we go then time's up <laughs> cock a doodle do how are you the answer my friend <laughs> is blowing in the wind oh we really do need some wind today I tell you it's so hot I, I, I think by the end of today's live stream it will be 40 degrees I think so well Alex was the uh, person to get everything correct really yes well let's have a look ah well done Alex Alex you are a star oh what oh yeah 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 <laughs> Alex is correct good the answer is and I think Alex I think you were correct Bing. she well has done. she has a gift for choosing the perfect wrapping paper wrapping paper so when you put something in paper you want to hide what it is we use wrapping paper you put wrapping paper around the gift because you don't want the person to know what it is there is a strange thing by the way that they do in China when they give you a gift when they give you a present for your birthday even though it's wrapped up they will still tell you what it is as they give it to you which I always found quite annoying <laughs> so if you give a gift if you give a present that you've wrapped up don't say what it is well some people have got ones that fit uh, like um, Jayendra has said plan birthday and gift she has a plan for choosing the perfect birthday gifts gifts okay then. yeah that fits I mean yeah we didn't say you couldn't use the word birthday no that's it I know that's okay you can use anything if it fits in there and it, it makes sense and Valentina has said also dress oh gift birthday and dress yes that, that's Perfect right birthday dress yes yeah for a party yes that's it they're not on my list but but yes that's good it fits and also it is grammatically correct or prize uh, Shad said you could put prize at the end so let's explain this first of all she has a gift so if you have a gift for something it means you are very good at doing it you have a gift for something yes a natural ability can be described as a gift mr. Duncan has a gift for presenting English live streams you could say 
Mm. But yeah, exactly. A gift. A gift is something that you give to somebody. Uh, a present at a birthday. Mm -hmm. It's also something that you're good at. Yes. He has a gift for music. A natural ability. Yes, a natural ability. And of course, wrapping paper. Wrapping. You are doing it. You are carrying out the job or the task by wrapping something. You are covering something so it can't be seen. Normally with paper wrapping paper is what you normally put around a gift to stop people from knowing what it is i think we have time for maybe one or two more and then we are going in the house i think mr steve we deserve what do we deserve today we deserve a lovely refreshing drink i think a cup of tea would be nice oh that's nice keep doing that Steve oh. I should have you know what I should have done I'm Wilton I should have actually brought the fan outside you should have we done. should have brought the fan we've got this lovely electric fan in the house so maybe I should have put it outside what's the temperature it's the same it's the same what if I do this <gasps> actually that'll probably I make it go down oh it's got no oh, it's still the same so there is the temperature now the temperature here in our little gazebo in our English garden look at that wow I'm actually getting heart palpitations Mr Duncan 36 really yes I'm wow. not joking I think it's the heat I think yes. I've got heat stroke okay well well <laughs> you can go if you want if you want to go and take, a, take I'll, a rest I'll try and soldier on if you say you soldier on it means you you carry on even though you're tired and weary and not feeling very well like a soldier mm. would have to carry on in battle yes so, so you're going to soldier on so you're using it as a verb soldier on you soldier you keep going even though you are feeling hot bothered sweaty stinky you carry on you soldier on here's another one Steve <laughs> I think she lived her life like a something in, in the wind. wind that's a hard one isn't it well yes <laughs> I think that's a it very... could be <laughs> depends whether you're a fan of a certain uh, singer songwriter that's very difficult I think so let's see if anybody gets it without a clue she lived her life like a something in the wind the word Not... is six letters and it's connected with birthdays or yes. parties it's not windmill <laughs> she lived her life like a windmill well that would be too many letters in Mr. the wind Duncan. yes today is a scorcher in uh, Algiers 39 degrees 39 so Miller in Algiers hello Algiers is, I think Algiers is uh, near Africa isn't it or yes yes it's close to Africa it's Algiers is is a hot spot so um, it's 39 so you're beating us there you're beating us we're only at 36 it's actually come down half a degree that is hotter than the inside of Mr Steve's underpants that's how hot it is it's melting oh, point yes melting point obviously lots of people know this song oh I see. oh it's a song is it I think so oh ah, well maybe Mr Steve can give us a little rendition of the song afterwards or maybe not May, maybe not she lived her life like a something in the wind and it's not kite <laughs> is it like a kite in the wind easy learn it's also their birthday today I think I'm really? enjoying your birthday as it's mine too one year older so easy that's... easy to learn happy birthday to you as well you are another year older I think maybe you are not as old as me I'm probably old enough to be your father or maybe your older brother how do we know I don't know I'm just guessing everyone on here is younger than me almost <laughs> and they're, they're definitely younger than not you not in the mind they're not oh well okay yes that's true yes my, my my mental age is is quite low a lot of people have got this Mr Duncan okay then this is also insects oh Oh, Mr. Duncan, I just want to scratch. 
you do I've noticed yeah there's the, the little black thunderbugs the thrips are out yes the thunderbugs the thunderbugs are here again thunderbugs thunderbugs wasn't well, that we have had thunder so wasn't uh, that a TV show thunder one person was very quick okay on their uh, with their fingers their fingers were fast mr. cockerel please tell us what the answer is to this one Ooh. Ooh. I've got a I've got a fly going up my shorts I'm not I'm not sure if I like it or not the fly certainly won't <laughs> the fly definitely won't enjoy it he's he's trapped there forever <laughs> here we go Arifal she, Hassan was the first to get this correct she lived her life like a something in the wind the answer is <coughs> candle candle because of course on your birthday you might have one candle or <laughs> you might have many candles on your cake unfortunately we can't put candles on my cake because it would be a fire hazard you see it might set fire to the house so unfortunately we can't have a cake with candles on Elton John yes Cory that is correct and of course it is relevant for this month because at the end of this month Steve it will be once again the anniversary of the death of Princess Diana yes so of course candle in the wind was also rewritten for for the funeral of Princess Diana which uh, Valentina has mentioned oh okay as well that's good it's well, 30 degrees in Bangladesh can you believe it it's hotter here than in Bangladesh we're beating you it we're is beating you <laughs> it's hotter here in our gazebo than Bangladesh I think that's amazing so we could go there and we'd be acclimatized yes we could we could go to Bangladesh now and we would be cooler where you are than where we are now in our gazebo you see we have time for one more so that was candle in the wind a famous song I feel like I'm melting like a candle <laughs> you can Mr. say that when it's hot you are you're melting I'm melting like a candle and you can say that and after a certain age as well Steve if if I think it's men after a certain age if they take their top off if they go into the garden without their vest or anything if they show their bare body from the waist upwards we, we sometimes say that they look like a melted candle oh well um, in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia it's 44 okay we can't beat that we can't beat 44 oh, yeah. you you uh, beat us there you you win you have the hottest one <laughs> but we're not far off no. we're only eight degrees off yes uh, and it's a very dry heat isn't it in Saudi Arabia um, whereas we've got a very humid muggy heat here uh, I think I'm right in saying I nearly went to to work in Riyadh okay many years ago uh, uh, but it didn't it didn't come to pass in the end okay we're, we're, we're running out of time now Steve good um, easy to learn was born in 1985 so you're oh. in your 30s in your 30s mm, about similar thir age to me I want at 35 I make that if my math mathematics is correct 35 that's young you are just a baby you are a baby in your 30s as I say before and I've, I will say it again now in your 30s you have the best part of your life it is where all the opportunities lie that's where they all are enjoy your 30s yes here we go is the here's the last one Steve the last one thank goodness for that I think Steve is quite relieved it's the last one this is the final sentence game for today this is hard by the way oh it might be hard it might be easy well, I think I'll go inside now while you finish off this last one the final <laughs> sentence game why didn't you save an easy one for the end Mr Duncan something 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 of the something there it is it's the final sentence game connected with birthdays something 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 of the something four five seven 
three letters. So the letters we are looking for four, five, seven, and three. If anyone gets that, I'll eat my hat. Really? Are you sure about that? I think someone might get it, you see. Really? Yes, I think so. Something, something, something of the something. That sounded like thunder. Is that thunder? I'm not sure. That sounded like thunder. Or was it an engine starting up? Oh, I don't know. I think it was. I think that was thunder then. Did anyone hear a rumble in the distance? It may have been Mr. Steve's stomach. Possibly, but I haven't had any lunch today. Poor Mr. Steve. What a shame. Curry's off. Got to run some errands. Bye, Curry. Happy birthday again to Mr. Duncan. Thank you. I've had a great time, by the way. I've I've loved your messages. I will do something on Friday. I will look at some of the messages and I will read them out on Friday. We also have some donations today. I will mention those on Friday. That is when I'm back, by the way. It will just be me on Friday. No, Mr. Steve, as far as we know. Friday, I think I will be working Friday. I will be in the garden trying to finish off a project which is taking far far longer than i thought it's almost taken the whole of the year i know i thought it would only take me like a couple of weeks it's taken me more like th two three months to get it to do it hasn't it to finish off all the repointing of the wall and this and the uh and repositioning all the slabs in the back garden yes so steve has been doing a lot of work unfortunately because of the weather We've had a lot of rain and the, the weather has been quite bad this year. Amongst other things happening during 2020, let's face it, it's been a little bit of a hectic year. So here we go. The final one before we go. We are just a couple of minutes mm. away from the end. Has Steve. anybody got any of these right? Do you no, think? not one. Ooh, this is a difficult. Can you give us a quick clue? Well, it's something you say. Ah, something you say something 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 of the something I will give you another 30 seconds because we are about to leave that is thunder that's thunder on the way everyone thunder there is thunder in the sky ah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well this is good yeah that's, yes that's the closest yes that's close that's Zoran thank you very much Zoran just the last word isn't quite right no no I will give you the answer in around 20 seconds from now better than me though because I haven't got a clue Mr Cockerell are you ready Mr Cockerell is really tired out today I've never He's seen very hard I've never seen such a limp cock ever here he comes No, I'm not telling you my age. You should never ask a lady her age. You should never ask a lady, especially a beautiful lady, in her nice clean vest. You should never ask her age. Here we go. Here's the answer. The sentence game. The final one for today before Mr. Steve collapses on the ground. Well, uh, who was it? I can't find it. This is something going on with the live stream today. Things keep vanishing. Uh... It was a little bit back there, you see, Steve. You have to go back. You might. Oh, me and technology. All oh, right. Ah, oh. oh. yeah, but there was another one back here. <laughs> we have to go, Steve. Yep. Go on. Oh, yes, there, there Zoran. Yes, Zoran. I, I, I did say Zoran. 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 Well done. Very close. Very close. You. Somebody else has got it completely right, but I think you probably. I haven't gave them a clue. Okay. I've got to give the answer, Steve, because we're, we're, we're over time now. <laughs> Ding! Many happy returns of the day. Many happy returns of the day. To Mr. Duncan. And Ding. to everybody else who has a birthday today. Yes, I'm um, surprised, actually. Two to other people and uh, somebody's nephew. Yes, we have a nephew. And we have, we have quite a few people celebrating their birthday along with me as well so now you can tell your friends and relatives i share my birthday with mr duncan and they will reply who who's that who never heard of him 
never heard of him you, ever you better get your equipment inside before there's a heavy storm mr. yes there is a storm on the way i don't want mr steve to get struck by lightning <laughs> he will end up looking like harry potter there's a clue to what we're going to be eating tonight behind you yes under the tree that is the reason why the reason why there is there is one of those there it is can you see it because that is what we are having for our evening birthday dinner i'm cooking for mr duncan can you yes. believe it in this heat i'm having to cook so that's what we're having tonight not not that one we're not actually eating that because that's a toy but we are having the real thing tonight lots of happy birthdays to you uh, it's been wonderful, Mr. Duncan. I, I flagged a bit. Yes, I can I'll see. Flag. If you flag, it means you're you're losing energy. Yes. You lose energy if you're flagging. You yes. get tired and you lose energy. Poor Mr. Steve is flag. feeling feeling tired. How would you spell that? Is it the same way you would spell spend it is. flag? F L A G. A, a flag that you wave. Yes, flag. But if you flag, it means you're tired and you lose. You, you've been doing quite well, then suddenly all your energy goes. For someone who wants to go. You, you don't seem to be in a hurry. Okay. I'll collect up my belongings. OK, Steve. Pack, and, uh, your, pack, your, pack your suitcase. And yes, it's time to go. Bye See bye, everybody. See you on Sunday, if not before. And now I'm going to go and lie down in a cool room. Bye bye. And there he goes. That's Mr. Steve going off into the sunlight. <laughs> getting some well-deserved sun on his body thank you very much for joining me today i hope you've enjoyed today's live stream and of course the sentence game as well i will be back with you on friday friday i will be with you from 2 p.m uk time i'm off now to enjoy the rest of my birthday we will be having a cup of tea we're having a nice little meal tonight as well in the house we will be cooking for ourselves isn't that lovely thanks for your company thank you very much for your lovely messages thanks for everything that you've done today i really do appreciate it and it's very nice thank you very much for giving up your time to join me here on the live stream i'm back on friday 2 p.m uk time this is mr duncan in the birthplace of english saying thanks for watching see you on friday 2 p.m uk time thanks also to mr steve for helping out in this very hot place we are having a hot day stay happy stay cool stay safe where you are and i will see you later and of course until the next time we meet here on youtube you know what's coming next yes you do Ta-ta for now.